Our reporter Matt Brown is in Kiev and he joins us now via webcam. Matt Brown, good to talk to you. Good morning. Good morning. So you're there in Kiev. The troops are lining up either side of the border there, Ukraine and, and down on the Crimean Peninsula. Just how bad does this situation look? Well, it's obviously very bad. I mean, Ukraine has completely lost control of the Crimean Peninsula now. Uh, Russian troops are surrounding Ukrainian army bases down there. Uh, the head of the Navy, only installed on the weekend, has defected and sworn allegiance to uh, the new pro-Russian mm. Prime Minister of the Crimean Parliament. Um, there is a, an increasing risk, I think it's unlikely, but there is an increasing risk of, of war between the two militaries of Ukraine and Russia. And, and you say it's unlikely, but if it was to come to that, what kind of clash would we, we be talking about? Because the, 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 the Crimean uh, military, I'm sorry, the Ukrainian military surely can't in any way compare to the Russian. No, that's right. I mean, today we've seen the Ukrainian Prime Minister announce that uh, the country is inches away from war with Russia, that uh, it's very close to an absolute disaster. Uh, they've issued a call up of army reservists and they've put the military on the highest state of alert. But they can't win. They can't take Russia on. It, it very much reminds me of 2008 when I was in Georgia, mm. when Georgia had a conflict with Russia. You know, what we're going to see is a lot of sabre rattling, some muscle flexing. And uh, in this case, I don't think uh, Russia is going to be giving back the territory that it already controls. And another question you've got to ask yourself when John Kerry says it's not going to be business as usual. I can tell you one country that can't afford not to have business as usual with Russia at the moment, and that is Ukraine. For example, it gets 60 percent of its gas from Russia. So mm. a, a very difficult and sticky situation here with military tensions rising, but a lot kind of counting against an all-out confrontation. Yes, indeed. And, and, and we heard the strong language there from John Kerry. But, Matt Brown, how do we interpret that? I mean, the, the threat there of being thrown out of the G8 and some sort of retaliation, as John Kerry put it, what could Russia really, really expect from the US in the international community? Well, that is serious. And Russia doesn't want to be left out in the cold uh, with only a, a, a rising China as its buddy in the international community. Uh, but that said... John Kerry and Barack Obama need Russia to broker a deal on Iran's nuclear program. They need Russia to broker a deal on the Syrian civil war. They need Russia to deal with a range of security problems, including withdrawing American uh, forces and, and uh, stability in Afghanistan. Mm. So there's a whole lot of you know, other uh, sides of the coin for those threats that John Kerry made. I, I doubt that they are um, threats made without intent. But uh, Vladimir Putin has just seen a pro-Russian president turfed out of power here in Kiev, mm. and he's not going to sit on his hands and, uh, and sit around whilst uh, what he would see as key Russian interests are put at stake. So what do we make of the multilateral and bilateral talks that are going on at the moment, in particular between Germany and Russia, Angela Merkel and Vladimir Putin continuing to talk? Uh, do we expect anything meaningful to come from that? Look, um, Vladimir Putin, we're told in the last hours, uh, told Angela Merkel that what he's doing is appropriate and that he hopes we can all work towards getting things back to normal in Ukraine. You see, the Russians see the ouster of uh, Viktor Yanukovych, a democratically elected president, as an act of extremism yes. by people here in Kiev. And they're just not about to sit around, as I've said, and, uh, you know, let that go without some kind of action to protect their interests. Their interests first and foremost at their Black Sea port there at Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula. Mm. But then there's the Russian speaking communities that pretty much dominate that area. And then the broader tracts of land ab above the Crimean, Crimean Peninsula along the border with Russia itself. And when you start talking about that kind of expansion of uh, the territory that we're, we're discussing here, then you are talking about maybe conflict between the militaries, maybe more civil war between pro-Russian and anti-Russian forces. That gets very dangerous. But that is the sort of territory 
that Vladimir Putin has alluded to. Matt, can we just go back to that, uh, to what seems to me extraordinary development with um, Rear Admiral Denis Berezovsky that you mentioned, the newly appointed head of Ukraine's Navy, actually switching allegiance, defecting if you like, and swearing allegiance to the Crimea region. Does that indicate that on the Ukrainian side there could be further crumbling of the, the unity within the defence forces? Look, there, have been, there has been a security uh, unit that has uh, also been of questionable loyalty down there. Uh, the Ukrainian government, though, says that its Navy ships uh, remain under its control in that region. It did move some Coast Guard vessels out of their ports down there to other locations. But I guess the, the main thing is that the hardware uh, and the troops themselves uh, haven't, you know, thrown in, their, thrown in the towel as yet. And uh, Matt Brown, just finally this morning, you're there in Kiev. A any sign that people are taking to the streets to protest what Russia's doing? Yeah, look, in the main square just down the road here, there are still many, many people. Uh, there's been a resurgence of nationalist feeling. One of the far-right, fascist, really, organisations that helped turf out Viktor Yanukovych has said that it's going to uh, form militias now uh, to patrol different parts of Ukraine and defend it against Russian aggression. So I think if you look beyond the very real and, and fair enough, we're concentrating on a threat of conflict between armies, look, look ahead to conflict between communities and conflict between militias and, uh, you know, um, not perhaps an insurgency, but a very ugly and violent campaign that might run for a fair while.